Uh, dear students, uh, welcome you back for the session 2 of our module 4, Feedback and Oscillator Circuits. Myself, Nataraj Vijapur, I will be continuing with the session 2. In the session 1, we have already discussed about the feedback concepts. We have already discussed about feedback connection types. In this session, we will again continue in the same module. We will cover few aspects of feedback connection types and then we will move to the practical feedback circuits. In the, if we can recall from the last session, in the last session, we have completed voltage series feedback. We have determined voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance of the voltage series feedback configuration. We will continue next with the uh, voltage shunt feedback. Before we do that, let us start with the session 1 outline. Okay? Uh, so, whatever we have discussed, effect of feedback. So, in the session 1, we have discussed about introduction, we have discussed about the voltage series feedback configuration. We will continue again for various configurations. We will discuss the effect of feedback on input and output impedances and then we will come to the practical circuits using feedback. Right? So, this today's session 2 outcomes, we will here interpret the further student will be able to interpret the configurations of feedback and will analyze further circuits containing the feedback. Courtesy, so for this session 2 as well as for all of this entire module, we will be uh, referring the content from the following textbooks authored by first one Robert Boylstead and Louis Nashelsky electronic devices and circuit theory, Adel Sedra and Smith microelectronic circuits and Milman Halke's integrated electronic circuits. Okay? So, we have taken the material, I have taken the material from this three textbooks. So, from the last session, if we continue, we have discussed about the voltage series feedback in the last session. We have determined the voltage gain, we have determined the input impedance, we have determined the output impedance. Today, we will proceed further for voltage shunt feedback configuration. Recall, any closed loop amplifier consists of an amplifier which is open loop gain, which is having an open loop gain of A, a feedback network of gain beta. Here, the aim is to control the gain as well as improvise the impedances. Input voltage source here is represented as a current source of magnitude i i. The feedback network receives output voltage and generates the feedback current which subtracts from the source current to give you the input current i i. Further, the amplifier here amplifies this input current at it generates an output voltage V naught, which is applied to the load. Continuously feedback network looks for output voltage, generates a feedback current that is mixed with the input source current to generate the current I. So, this is about the circuitry. Let us first determine voltage gain A f. So, voltage gain A f it is nothing but the closed loop gain. So, when I talk about closed loop gain, it is a gain of this amplifier which is subjected to feedback by this feedback network. So, output voltage for this entire closed loop is V naught, input parameter for this closed loop is I s. So, closed loop gain A f will be equal to V naught by I s. Further, this amplifier produces an output voltage which is a function of input current. So, V naught is equals to A into I i. Source current I s can be expressed as I i plus I f. Like this is from the 
basic aspect that the input current I i is generated by subtracting feedback current from the source current. So, I can put source current as I i plus feedback current or the difference current plus feedback current. So, we can put the source current I s as I i which is the difference between I s and I f plus I f. So, further substitute for feedback current feedback current can be expressed as a function of feedback current can be expressed as a function of I f as well as V naught. So, output voltage generated is equals to uh, output feedback current is beta into V naught. So, substitute and solve you will get A f equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. Further we observe that open loop gain Okay, as well as closed loop gain. You can observe that closed loop gain is less compared to the open loop gain. So, it is A divided by 1 plus A into beta with the further advantages. Next, we will go for input impedance determination of a closed loop amplifier. So, what is input impedance? So, this figure shows the input impedance. Input impedance of this entire feedback network as seen from the input side. So, you can observe this is the entire feedback network. So, Z i f represents input impedance as seen from the source. So, I can represent Z i f. I can call this Z i f as V i divided by i s, where V i is the input voltage and I s is the source current. I cannot consider I i here, because I i is the current flowing in open loop amplifier. I s is the current which is applied to closed loop amplifier. So, it is V i divided by I s. Further express I s as I i plus I f, which is equals to I i plus beta into V naught. Divide all the sides by I i, you can get input impedance Z i f as Z i divided by 1 plus A into beta. Further, you can note that here input impedance gets modified, it does not get increased. In fact, here the input impedance gets reduced, it is Z i divided by 1 plus A into beta, it is reduced. Okay. Whereas, in previous voltage series feedback, it was improved. Next, we will further proceed to current series feedback. So, we have already discussed this topology, where you have input voltage V s, open loop gain amplifier A, feedback network having a gain of beta, overall voltage gain is I naught, which is the output current divided by V s, which is a input voltage. So, here current is fed back in series, which generates the which determines the controlling element. Fine, we will go for output impedance determination. If we recall, before we determine output impedance, we represent this input impedance or the closed, we have an open loop amplifier. This open loop amplifier, we are going to put it in terms of more depth analysis. So, before we go for this uh, output impedance, I have an open loop amplifier, which is A. So, earlier we have put it as a one black box. Now, we will represent the input impedance. A each every amplifier has an input impedance. So, this input impedance is nothing but the Z i, which is input impedance of the open loop amplifier. Further, this generates a current I naught. So, output of the this open loop amplifier can be represented by one current source, which is of the magnitude I naught in parallel with Z naught, where Z naught represents the output impedance of the open loop amplifier. I know about this. Z naught, but I want to know what is overall impedance of this closed loop amplifier. 
So, overall impedance of the closed loop amplifier is denoted as ZOF, which is output impedance as seen from the load side without including the load. So, without load including the load, what is the output impedance I can see that is determined as ZOF. Okay. So, further we will continue. So, we have represented the amplifier more conveniently in terms of its input impedance, the current source and the output impedance. Further, we will go for determination of this ZOF. We have discussed previously also, whenever an output impedance has to be determined, the input, input voltage source is set to 0, a test voltage is applied at the output. Okay. So, we will again go back to the same procedure we keep the output section, we consider only the output section of the open loop amplifier. Output is represented by a current source in parallel with Z naught. We have applied a test voltage V and a current I. So, this is this test voltage V has resulted in a current I. So, what is ZOF? ZOF is output impedance as seen from the load side. It is ratio of voltage divided by current. So, I can calculate ZOF as V by I. So, here we have set what? We have set V s is equals to 0. So, this current I can be put from current division rule as current I equals to V by Z naught minus A into V i. So, this current I splits into Z naught as well as into this current source. Okay. So, substitute for V i, V i is equals to V f because V s is 0 and solve you will get output impedance as Z naught into bracket 1 plus A into beta. Okay. So, this way, these are the various ways where I can determine input impedance, output impedance, closed loop gain of the closed loop amplifier. So, we have seen for voltage series feedback, we have seen for voltage shunt feedback and even we have determined output impedance with current series feedback overall procedure for all the configurations remain same. So, if we can just look at or summarize the effect of feedback on various input and output impedance, we have observed that some parameters get increased here. As you can see, for the voltage series feedback, input impedance gets increased, same with the current series feedback also the input impedance gets increased. Whereas, input impedance gets reduced for voltage shunt feedback and current shunt feedback, mainly because the resistance comes in, feedback resistance comes in parallel here, whereas here it comes in series. Whereas, output impedance in voltage series feedback gets reduced, current series feedback it gets increased, further in voltage shunt feedback it gets reduced and further in current shunt feedback it gets increased. Wherever you are tapping the output in series, the impedance increases, wherever you are tapping it in parallel, impedance decreases. Okay. So, this way we can summarize the. So, depending on your application, you can pick up appropriate feedback topology. Either if you want more of Z i f and less of Z naught f, you can go for voltage series feedback. You want more input impedance and output impedance, you can go for current series feedback. So, this way you can look for various topologies. So, uh, let us consider one sample problem, where we have to determine. So, you are asked here to determine the voltage gain, input and output impedance with feedback for voltage series feedback configuration having open loop gain A equals to minus 100. So, observe here minus here just indicates a phase shift. It indicates that output and input differ in phase by 180 degree. So, the negative sign here just indicates a phase shift. Input impedance 10 kilo ohms, output impedance 20 kilo ohms. You have to determine voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance with feedback for a bit feedback factor of beta equals to 0.1 and beta equals to 
So, we have already calculated the, we have also already derived for voltage series feedback configuration. So, for a voltage series feedback, we have already determined the formula. Closed loop gain is A f equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, you have to just substitute the value of A as well as the value of beta here. Further, we have also determined Z i f. Z i f is input impedance with feedback. So, it is Z i into bracket 1 plus A into beta. We have also determined output impedance with feedback, which is Z naught divided by 1 plus A into beta already. So, Z i is nothing but R i in your problem, Z naught is R naught in your problem. So, given the values, A is also given, A is given as minus 100. So, here you have to determine for the two cases when beta equals to example 0.1 and beta equals to 0.5. So, for the two cases, you have to just substitute and find out. Okay. So, you can substitute, we have already done that aspect. So, you can see that closed loop gain A f will be equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, substitute the values, you will get input impedance as 110 kilo ohms and output impedance as 1.82 kilo ohms, A f as minus 9.09. So, here 9 just indicates a phase shift here. Okay, so, what you can observe? Gain was 100, from 100 because of the feedback factor, gain became closed loop gain become minus 9. So, there is a considerable reduction in the gain, whereas original input impedance was 10 kilo ohms, it became 110 kilo ohms. So, feedback changes the parameters a lot. Output impedance was just 20 k, it reduced to 1.82 kilo ohms. So, lot of advantages are there of having a feedback. Okay. So, this is about voltage series feedback, we have just discussed one sample of voltage series feedback. Now, let us see the whether feedback reduces the distortion is a question. Reduction in the frequency distortion with negative feedback. Of course, the negative feedback reduces the frequency distortion. How it is? So, we have seen that closed loop gain A f can be put as A f equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. Let us consider that A into beta is much, much greater than 1. If the product A into beta is much, much greater than 1, then this 1 plus A into beta approximately becomes equal to A into beta. So, this implies A f will be equal to A divided by A into beta or it is approximately equals to 1 plus beta. Now, this indicates that closed loop, closed loop gain is only function of the feedback network gain. Now, suppose the case that feedback network is purely resistive. So, if the feedback network is purely resistive, you can observe that closed loop gain is independent of frequency distortions. Amplifier may be reactive. So, A, A may be complex, A may be a reactive element, which consists of active elements or whose frequency response varies, but feedback network is resistive. So, you, your closed loop gain becomes independent of the frequency distortion here. So, that is a very, very important point. If the amplifier is reactive also, the closed loop gain will be free from 
frequency distortion. One more aspect feedback as we have discussed it reduces noise as well as it reduces the non-linear distortion. Okay. So, this is one sample plot. Okay. So, there is a one sample plot Ill illustrates reduction in a non-linear distortion. So, what this figure is about? Um, this figure is about output voltage plotted as a function of input voltage. So, these are the transfer characteristics. So, this is a transfer characteristic of one element or one amplifier. This is without feedback. You can see there is lot of non-linearity without feedback. Here it is for example, may be 1000 the gain, then here it will be 100, then here it will be 0. Okay. So, lot of non-linearity is involved. So, lot of non-linearity is involved in the system. On the other side also, you can see the non-linear behavior. So, this is called as non-linear behavior. Uh, this is seen from the transfer characteristics. Now, if I subjected it to beta with a 0 0.01, you can see that if it is a, if it is a open loop gain, if it is 1000 and if I keep beta as 0 0.01, then closed loop gain A f will be equal to 1000 divided by 1 plus 1000 into 0 0.01. So, what you can observe? Closed loop gain will be hardly 100 or it will be 10. So, it will be reduced a lot. So, there will be lot of reduction in the closed loop gain, which makes the system more linear. So, you can observe here, 100 was the gain here, it became 10, 1000 was the gain here, it became 100. So, lot of reduction was observed and you can see the linearity improves on the side also. Here it was 0, from 0 it came to 1. So, there is a lot of linearity observed. So, what an uh, feedback does? Feedback improves or the feedback brings in linearity. With feedback system becomes more linear. This is one of the most important advantage. One more uh, aspect, what feedback does, that is an advantage, the negative feedback. So, here bandwidth gets improved. So, the negative feedback here improves the bandwidth of amplifier. You can observe here. So, this is a plot of gain against frequency. A denotes the open loop gain of the amplifier. You can see the open loop gain of the amplifier. So, this is the open loop gain of an amplifier. It is bandwidth which is defined between upper cutoff and lower cutoff frequencies. Lower cutoff frequency is f 1, upper cutoff frequency is f 2. The bandwidth is difference between the upper cutoff frequency and the lower cutoff frequency. It is denoted as b here. So, this is original bandwidth, but if I subject it to feedback, it is being observed, it is it can be realized that upper cutoff frequency gets postponed. So, my f 2 here is the upper cutoff frequency of open loop amplifier, it gets postponed, it becomes f 2 f, f 2 f is 1 plus a into beta into f 2, which is feedback factor multiplied by the upper cutoff frequency. Whereas, lower cutoff frequency earlier was f 1, it gets pre-poned, it gets pre-poned f 1 f is equal to f 1 divided by 1 plus a into beta. So, f 2 f, f 2 gets postponed, f 1 gets pre-poned, effectively overall bandwidth beta f gets increased. It gets increased by a factor 1 plus a into beta, which is very, very important here. So, negative feedback improves the bandwidth of the amplifier. So, these all are the advantages of feedback. We, so, we have realized all the aspects, all the advantages of feedback. We have one more option. We have discussed about stability. So, we have discussed in session 1 that the gain gets improved because of the feedback or stability of the gain is achieved because of the feedback. So, let us uh, 
see how the stability can be achieved because of the feedback. Okay. So, in order to analyze this stability, we will go for closed loop gain. We know that closed loop gain is A f is equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, if I differentiate this equation with respect to A. So, if with respect to A, if we differentiate this equation, so it will be 1 upon 1 plus A into beta the whole square. Okay. So, d a f with respect to d a and gain d a with respect to d a is 1. Okay. So, let us call this as equation 2, call this as equation 1. So, this implies d a f is equals to d a divided by 1 plus a into beta the whole square. If we divide this equation 3 by 1, so if equation 3 is divided by 1, it gives d a f by a f. So, d a f divided by a f is equals to 1 plus a into beta whole square, 1 plus a into beta. So, 1 plus a into beta remains into d a by a. Let us put it in terms of absolute considering the negative sign. So, we have negative sign also which indicates a decrease. So, we can put it in the absolute sign. So, you can observe that d a f by a f. What d a f by a f indicates? Why we do differentiation? Whenever we want to compute a change, we do the differentiation. So, what we observe that when we computed the change for if the open loop gain changes by an amount d a, then the closed loop gain changes by an amount 1 divided by 1 plus a into beta. So, comparatively there is a less reduction in the closed loop gain compared to the open loop gain. So, we observe that closed loop gain reduces a lot, reduces less or changes less. If open loop gain changes by an amount d a, then closed loop gain changes by d a divided by 1 plus a into beta. So, lot of less change is observed, lot of change is observed in open loop gain, very less change is observed in the closed loop gain. Further 1 plus a into beta for a into beta much much greater than 1 can be equated to a into beta. So, d a f by a f is equals to 1 upon a into beta into d a by a. So, what this we, what aspect we carry from this? is that gain is very, very stable. If open loop gain changes by a large amount, closed loop gain changes by a very small amount, which is d a by 1 plus a into beta. This can be also observed by one problem. Okay. So, we have one small problem. If an amplifier having a gain of minus 1000, it is the open loop gain and a feedback of beta equals to 0.1 has a gain change of 20 percent due to temperature. Calculate the change in the gain of feedback amplifier. So, A is given to you, beta is given to you, d a is given to you 20 percent, d a by a in fact is given to you which is 20 percent change. So, now you have been asked to compute the change in the feedback gain. We have already seen that element how to compute the change. So, it is change can be computed as d a f by a f is equals to 1 upon a into beta magnitude of 1 upon a into beta into d a by a. So, substitute here all the parameters. So, if you substitute and simplify, so you will observe that d a f by a f or change in the closed loop gain will be hardly 0 0.2 percent we had open loop gain changed by 20 percent, whereas closed loop gain just changed by 0.2 percent. So, the temperature has resulted in a 20 percent change in open loop amplifier, but it could affect only 0.2 percent change in the closed loop amplifier. So, this conveys that gain has become, gain will be more stable with a feedback factor.
although the gain will be reduced, but it will be more stable with negative feedback. Okay, now, let us look at some practical feedback circuits. Okay. So, this is a voltage series feedback, we have already discussed this, we are just recalling this topology. So, what is a voltage series feedback? You have an amplifier, feedback network, a input voltage source V s, load resistance. Basically, what we are doing here? Output is fed back in a direction negative to the input. So, feedback network samples the output voltage, it generates a feedback voltage that mixes in series and generates an error signal V i here. Okay. So, this, this aspect is about voltage series feedback. So, you will get an error signal V i here. So, let us consider few practical circuits. Let us, the, on this topology, let us see the circuits which are developed. So, the first practical feedback circuit is the one which consists of F E T. Okay. So, here you have an F E T, input signal is applied to the gate, source is grounded, drain, output is taken from drain. So, it is a common source configuration. You have a coupling capacitor C D, feedback network. So, this is a feedback network, very, very important, which consists of two resistances R 1 and R 2. Then we have an load here, output resistance R naught. Input voltage source is applied between gate and source or it is applied to the gate. The F E T amplifies this input voltage, output is available across the drain. Then this output is fed to feedback network consisting of resistances R 1 and R 2. So, as you can see, this is a voltage divider network. What is the function of feedback network? Function of feedback network is to sample the output voltage. So, you can see here, we are sampling, we are collecting only the voltage across R 2, which is a feedback voltage and it is given in a direction opposite to the source voltage or to subtract from the source voltage. So, here you are generating a V i, here you are generating a V i, which is a difference of V s minus V f. So, this subtracts from the input voltage. So, now, here how the parameters are calculated here. L I need to calculate for this F E T, what is A f, how you can determine the closed loop gain A f. Okay. So, what is important is V f here, V f is taken across R 2, a potential divider network. Now, it is an F E T amplifier. So, we have already seen how do you determine the gain of an F E T amplifier without feedback, that is without this R 1 and R 2 being there in place, gain will be V naught divided by V m, which is minus G m into R L. Okay. Now, what is R L? R L is a parallel combination of resistances, R L is equals to R D, R naught and R 1 plus R 2. Okay. So, all three resistances come in parallel. Why all three resistances come in parallel? When we go for AC analysis, we go for D, we exclude the parameters containing D C. So, R D is grounded as V D D is grounded. Okay. So, R D comes in parallel with this series combination of R 1 and R 2. Further, this series combination of R 1 and R 2 is in parallel with R naught. So, effective output impedance as seen from the output side or the output resistance will be R naught in parallel with R 1 and R 2 in parallel with R D. Okay. Now, the feedback network, feedback network provides a gain of V f by V naught. So, how it is V f by V naught? So, how it is R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. It can be also analyzed from the feedback network. So, here the feedback network consists of resistances R 1 and R 2. right? So, we have two resistances here, which is R 1 and R 2. So, what we are doing? 
the output voltage is appearing across this series combination of R 1 and R 2 and we are just taking a feedback voltage which is output voltage across R 2. So, if I assume a current I flowing through this potential divider network, then feedback voltage V f is this current I into R 2 because I am taking the output voltage across R 2. Further, this current I can be put as V naught divided by R 1 plus R 2 into V naught. So, this implies V f by V naught is equal to R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. To accommodate the phase shift, you have minus R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. Okay. So, this is how the feedback network gain is calculated. Now, once you cal once you know A, you have you know A here, which is minus G m into R L, you know beta here minus R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. So, you can straight away calculate the gain, which is a closed loop gain. So, this closed loop gain is A f is equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta substitute minus G m into R L is A. 1 plus what is beta? Beta is R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. A is minus G m into R L substitute. Closed loop gain will be minus R 1 plus R 2 by R 2. So, for feedback circuit gain will be voltage series feedback circuit gain of the F A T amplifier will be reduced, but it brings in lot of improvements in input impedance as well as output impedance. So, this one small problem where we calculate the gain without and with feedback for the F A T amplifier. So, you have given the values R 1 is 80 kilo ohms, R 2 is 20 kilo ohms, R naught is 10 kilo ohms, R D is 10 kilo ohms and transconductance is given 4000 micro Siemens. Okay. So, here we need to calculate the gain without and with feedback. Formulas are there already given. What is the gain without feedback? So, it is minus G m into R L. So, we have already calculated. So, gain is minus G m into R L. Feedback factor also we have derived. So, A f is A divided by 1 plus A into beta. This also we have derived. So, you have to just simply substitute and find out. So, here you will get open loop gain as minus G m into R L, which is without feedback minus 20. Then we calculate the feedback factor and determine A f, which comes out to be minus 4. What is the role here? We have to determine R L, which is combination of R parallel combination of R naught and R D here. Okay. So, this is how we can calculate the factors. We have one more example. We can realize voltage series feedback using F it is also. So, we have realized using F it is. Now, the same topology we have we can realize using OPAM. I think you all had an introduction to OPAM in the previous semester. So, this is an OPAM circuitry. What I typically an OPAM does? OPAMP amplifies difference between its inverting terminal and non-inverting terminal. So, this denotes non-inverting terminal and this denotes inverting terminal. So, OPAMP receives the two inputs here. One is source voltage V s, which is connected to non-inverting terminal. Feedback network here is also a potential divider network, which consists of R 1 and R 2 and which is supplied to the inverting terminal. So, the way we derive here, the way we have derived for potential divider network in the previous case, same way we have derived here. There is no phase shift here, because OPAMP is being connected in a as an amplifier in a non inverting configuration. So, feedback voltage or feedback voltage generated is V f is equals to I into R 2 i is V naught divided by R 2 or is equals to R 2 divided by 
R 1 plus R 2. In the similar way, we have calculated V f by V naught is nothing but the feedback network gain. V f indicates output voltage of the feedback network, V naught indicates input voltage of the feedback network. So, this is the way we calculated the, we should calculate the gain. So, we have an input voltage V s, which is applied to the non-inverting terminal. So, PAM being connected in a non-inverting amplifier here, output voltage is fed back via resistances R 1 and R 2 and it is connected to inverting terminal. V i is V s minus V f. We know that op amp always amplifies the difference between its two terminals. So, one terminal is receiving V s, another terminal is receiving V f. So, op amp is in the voltage series feedback mode. So, now calculate the amp one example here. Calculate the gain of the amplifier with the open loop gain A equals to. So, 1 rack is the gain here, R 1 is given to you 1.8 kilo ohms, R 2 is given to you as 200 ohms. So, calculate the gain here. Okay. Uh, so, this you can do. So, work out. So, this is one more example for voltage series feedback. Further, we have one more example using transistors. Okay. All of us have studied BJT amplifiers. So, this is a voltage series feedback in the emitter follower circuitry. Okay. So, so, this example demonstrates time So, this example uh, demonstrates voltage series feedback, which is followed for emitter follower topology. So, what is an emitter follower? If we recall, okay, emitter follower is nothing but common collector configuration. If we take output from the emitter terminal, we the uh, transistor is said to be in the emitter follower mode. Usual procedure is in common emitter configuration, we take the output across collector of the transistor. So, now let us look at this BJT. We have input voltage source V s, which is applied between base and emitter of a transistor. Collector is reverse biased by V c c. Okay, base to emitter junction is also forward biased by V c c. R b is the feedback biasing, R b is the biasing register, R c is also the biasing register. Here, we have one resistance R e, which is placed in the emitter terminal, okay, which is it is being placed in the emitter terminal and output voltage is taken across this emitter terminal. Okay. So, now, if we take output across the collector here, so it will be common emitter configuration, same aspect here, we are tapping at the emitter here. Emitter base to emitter junction is a forward biased junction. So, voltage gain will be much reduced in this emitter follower. In fact, output follows the input, whatever is the input, same voltage you will get at the output. So, hence the name emitter follower. The important element here, this resistance R e acts as a feedback register. So, there is a resistance here R e. So, this R e acts as a feedback register, you have R b, R c and R e here, this acts as a feedback register. If we calculate the gain, then the A will be equals to so, we are calculating for this entire feedback arrangement, considering this register being present in the feedback path. So, this register is common to base to emitter loop as well as it is there in the collector to emitter loop. So, here this acts as a feedback element okay, and we are taking output across this emitter terminal. Output follows the input here as I told it is a emitter follower circuitry. So, the gain if we calculate, so it will be V naught by V s which will be equal to I c into R e. So, you have emitter current equal to collector current here. So, collector current from H parameter model can be expressed as H f e into I b into R e. 
Okay, so further you can express I B as V S divided by H I E. Substitute and calculate H F E into R E divided by H I E will be the open loop gain of the amplifier. Open loop gain of the amplifier will be H F E into R E divided by H I. Beta is one here because feedback voltage as well as output voltage both are same here. This is acting as a feedback to the input loop. So V F by V naught is equal to one. So if you calculate closed loop gain. Which is V naught by V S. Substitute beta as one and simplify. It will be H F E R E divided by H I E plus H F E into R E. So H F E indicates the gain, current gain. H I E indicates input impedance. Okay. So we recall the concepts of H parameter model here. Okay. So output current or emitter current here is expressed as collector current I C is equal to I E. Further, you can express it as H F E into I B. So this way you can derive. So these analysis is very very important. Okay. So we have next one more practical circuitry which consists of current series feedback. So uh, so let us summarize what all we have covered in this aspect. Okay. So we started with voltage shunt feedback. So we discussed about how do you find out input impedance? How do you calculate output impedance in case of voltage series feedback? Right. So let us move back. Okay. Then further we calculated about current series feedback also. We discussed about what all the various impedances in voltage series configuration, current series configuration, voltage shunt configuration, and the current shunt configuration. So, for all the configurations we determined. Further, we studied the effect of frequency distortion. So, what feedback does? Feedback removes the frequency distortion. So, even though amplifier may be reactive, if feedback network is purely resistive and A into beta is or A into beta which is called as loop gain, if it is very, very high then you can uh, make the amplifier free from frequency distortion. We also saw that negative feedback improves the bandwidth of the op amp. Further, we discussed about voltage series feedback circuits. We also discussed about gain stability. Okay, gain st how the gain is made stable because of the negative feedback we discussed. We discussed with one practical example also that one. Then we discussed for F E T S the voltage series feedback for op amp, okay, as well as we discussed for B J T also for for three circuits. So we discussed about voltage series feedback. Further, this is a we are just visualizing. We have already studied this, right? You have studied this emitter follower, but you have not studied this from feedback point of view. So we have studied this from feedback point of view. We have studied op amp previously, but we have not looked at it from feedback point of view. So, here we are looking at it from negative feedback point of view. FET also we have studied, right. So, but we have not applied the concept of negative feedback and visualized it. So, this is with feedback we are studying or we have already studied this circuits. We are just impact of feedback we are visualizing. Okay. So, in the next session again, we will discuss current series feedback, voltage shunt feedback, all the other practical circuits we will be discussing. Okay. Thank you.